Yeah. Uh, high five and then <laughs> disinfect your hands. Yeah. Well, the first rule, the first rule of social distancing, I'm noticing, is no eye contact with anybody out in public. That seems. Is that to be what the they're doing? Rule. I smile to everybody. Yeah, they go out there, and everyone you try to look at. They're... Yeah, I smile. Yeah, they, <laughs> but they all they all mean mugging everybody. Yeah, what are you doing out here? You better have a real job. But you, Did you just cough. Too. I've been yeah. shopping. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I did go to the electro electronics store. I had to get some equipment. But... I bought yeah. the shower curtain, and there was like six shower people curtain. in the store. You went shopping, you went for a shower curtain? That's There's what I, so much well, more exciting things to get. I agree, but that was flooding. <laughs> you don't understand how Yaya takes showers. She was flooding the entire thing. I found a kitchen store, and then I was... The problem is I can't go shopping with Daya because then she like looks at everything I'm going to buy, and she's like, why would you spend $30 on a whipped cream maker? I'm like, because it makes whipped cream. Yeah, <laughs> we have a show coming the up. The possibilities <laughs> is exactly, amazing. Exactly. Yeah, now, somehow, we can, you can write... Now that there's footage of it being used, I think you can write we'll off... Be good. All, All of it. your kitchen expenses. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I bet you we can. Yeah. I just got to take a picture of it once. Probably. Yeah. Tim. Tim, exactly. Is that Tim, good? Tim listens to the podcast. <laughs> can we? Yeah. So, do that. so we're back amidst another another week of the quarantine. We're here in the dungeon. We have, uh, Richard's going to join us because we're going to do a Q&A episode today. Yep. Um, we got a whole bunch of questions that had held over from the uh, live Q&A from Instagram as well. But then I started looking. We I make those posts in too many places, yeah. and you have too many questions coming from too many places. I always feel bad because someone would be on it first, and then you never get to them. Right, so, especially when we unsell three at a time. Yeah, yeah. So I, <laughs> we made an arrangement with Julian before this one, where I said we w I'm going to pick some questions we can move through quickly. He said, "Oh, that's good because I've got two things I want to say too." And I'm like, "Then yours goes last." <laughs> so that way we still get through these ones quickly. We'll go to it quickly. Constraints. So, um, should we dive right in? Ish. Cool. Julian can't talk about what he wants to talk Bring about it yet. On. So, you know he's gonna segue into it though. I know. Oh, I a dude asked about upper pec, and he was able to go from upper pec to go into <laughs> brain networks. <laughs> yeah. For three hours. They're related. <laughs> and Anywho. Then Twenty minutes on Schrodinger. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then was, as a conclusion, they need to know. <laughs> okay. So this one here, I, I really like this question. I have many multi-part questions. I'm kind of grabbing what we can get to. Um, education is, for the most part, still an objective-based system. That's for sure. What could be one thing that you would change immediately to make it more constraint-based? No Q and A's. No Q and A's. Yep. Like Simple. this, or grades. Yeah. Tests. No, no, like uh, which means whenever they test the kids, yeah, you can uh, no more Q and A's, no more um, offering different dates, no more oh, offering multiple choices. choice questions. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. Like Q &A's. No more multiple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No uh, multiple choices questions. Yeah. Everything is an essay. Yeah. Because you have to understand your subject when you when you want to write. Like you can see the bullshit coming from a mile away. Multiple choices, you go like, ah, oh, close enough. You know, like you yeah. don't have to learn anything. It's memorization mm -hmm. instead of learning. Yeah. So you get to answer the stuff. Some of them just go like this. As long as you get a C, you're fine. No A, B, C, D in there. Like you go by 1 to 20. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. So we know exactly where you are. So, you know, like you set the constraints for learning and not the constraints for memorization. Multiple yeah. choices question only sets up memorization. I think I literally graduated high school on that alone. Like the ability yeah. to game right. those, the way those tests work because I didn't have to understand them. I didn't have to go, yep. go to class. You could just kind of know enough and know how questions are worded, how tests are yeah. played. That was one of the reasons I dropped out of so many college classes that I really enjoyed because I would listen to the classes and I would participate and I would have great conversations with the with the teachers, the professors. Mm -hmm. um, and you go to the test and I was like, nothing that we spoke about in class is on this test. Yeah. So like, we were supposed to read the book and, and I was like, I was listening, then, I was paying attention to <laughs> you and what you were teaching. Yeah, exactly. And none of it's on the test. Yeah. And like Dea is so good. Like she went through, like she killed the university, but I remember like a week before her midterms or her finals, she would just sit there and just memorize mm -hmm. and memorize and take notes and memorize. After the test was done, she doesn't remember things. Yeah. yeah. She would not. Mm -hmm. She's And you're yeah, like, yeah, like all of them a week later, it was gone. Yeah. It's like, what kills me is like, for example, uh, knowing what the exact date of World War II, when World War II started. But not you know, when like, it started. But exactly, but not understanding any of the sociological impacts or, right. you, you know what I mean, like the socioeconomics of that time. Why did World War II start it? No clue, but you know the date. Right. And that's, but that's today's society. That's yeah. medical science. And, you know, functional segregation yeah. versus functional integration. That's, that's how I would change school yeah. first. Force them to write essays on everything. In math. If you did not use like literally words, 
uh, mm -hmm. in between the stuff to explain why you go from one equation to the, to the second, you get dot points. I know because it happened to me. Yeah. Well, I was, yeah, yeah. Tyler. I was in, <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. In, in fifth grade, I got called the cheater in school because I would just write down the answer because I do all the work yeah. in my head. Mm -hmm. And so I got called up to the class to do the math problem on the board. And I just put numbers down, but I got to the right answer. And she's and I got in trouble because I didn't follow the the system yeah. that they told me how to do the, the multiplications. Right. But that's to force you to because at some point you can't do it in your head anymore. So they would, what they want to make sure is that there's that A B C D E of math yeah. that is required to the on the on the highest degrees because because eventually you run into stuff where you're gonna have to be uh, you know like A B C D E because no. there's just too much shit. But the new core math, have you seen the new core oh, math? Yeah, they... Dude, I can't help. <laughs> yeah, my kid Lincoln is now. That, well, Daddy, that's not how you do it. Guys. I'm like, well, well, three plus two equals five. Why is that different now? Yeah, Lincoln's <laughs> done, just finished with sixth grade like a couple months ago. It was an online class, and holy shit. Yeah, yeah that's, that's some math that I never have to use in my real life beyond what he's doing right now, and none of it makes sense to I me. I don't understand why we have to change math every five years. It's so weird. I thought yeah. they had it under control. Yeah. <laughs> Ma math, you would think so, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um read an Instagram post about static holds to warm up and prime the nervous system. Uh, it would be nice to elaborate more on this, both practically as how it, and how it further ties into the software and hardware. Package. I'm sure I did somewhere. Yeah. Now static, static holds, I mean, I talking, didn't talk about, I talked about this in the I think that podcast. was the isometric during, I don't remember if we talked about it on the podcast. I see, I'm pretty sure I did. Okay. So it was means a, you guys did not listen. That's okay. I think it was on a now call. We it was on a call it. as well. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I spoke about it everywhere. Whatever. Um, it was, uh, there's a paper that should be on the Strong Fit Library. Now. Yep. I believe if you search for, I believe even if you search for the word isometric, I think it's in the title. Yeah. On the light. Uh, it was showing that a dynamic movement, so you know, like a movement of uh, a limb at a joint or whatever, there's a moment where the sympathetic response plateaus. Okay. Like the so sympathetic response, the blood pressure, pain levels, uh, core temperature, all that stuff, it eventually levels off, right? Like almost like a uh, self defense mechanism, where on isometric contraction, it does not. So if you read the paper, you'll see what I mean. But in that case, what interested me about it was the blood pressure mm -hmm. rising. Because blood pressure means <laughs> right into your insula. Yeah, I can go into this. Means the active eye, <laughs> means the fight mode. Okay. See, there's always a way. I'm really good. I'm getting good at this. <laughs> there's always a way for me to go where I want to be. So just like, so how do I warm up my shoulders? Well, let's talk I'll about go the, the right into your insula. insula. Exactly. And so um, bottom line, he was showing that isometric contraction never levels off. That means that the blood pressure keeps going up. So the active eye has to stay, uh, the mental part has to get stronger, stronger, and stronger, stronger. That means the pain never stops going up. Mm -hmm. Right? So that means like, which for example, which is true, right? Yeah. This is why I quit. Um, oh, there's a rabbit hole there. Um, anyway, <laughs> the, um, so the idea was blood pressure and pain Talk. cognition yeah. 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 keeps going up on an isometric, but that's not the case on a dynamic movement. So long story short, again, it's the, f you just keep going. The fight mode has to just keep going up on isometric holds. So it's the perfect way to get you into the fight mode. Yeah. It's a perfect way to activate a muscle that you don't feel is working the way you like. So you put a neoprene, you do ISO holds on that muscle. It works really well. I believe that's why carries work so well as well because there's always an isometric part of it. Like you do your carries, your upper back has to maintain while you have dynamic movement with the legs and the core. So all that together makes exercises like that the best primers. That's why I think the fight mode gets to the utmost during uh, carries. Okay. That's what burn the question uh, yeah. training uses so many carries. Okay. By the way, good exercise for you out there to warm up, for example, is you do Pick a muscle, so I don't know if you like, let's say your uh, lower back or whatever, right? You do an isometric uh, hole like on a GSG, you know, like mm -hmm. not for the abs, but for the lower back, right? Yeah. And then five seconds, and then you do five reps. Five seconds hold, 10 seconds hold, five reps. Five, 10 seconds hold, five reps. And you do this to get to a certain number of reps. And you'll see, it, it, you never feel the burn like on those. Yeah. Same thing on biceps, you hold five seconds, five reps, hold five seconds, stuff like that. The, um, it keeps the, um, the fight mode going up and up and up and up. The pain level becomes absurd. Yeah. That's a great way to connect to a muscle. For me, biceps are always hard. 
So I do that a lot. Now that's mentioned in this context as a warm up, but I also see it used often as finishers. Just because, well, I, well, I think yeah. there's, there's an interesting point to this is that uh, activation is important, and oftentimes yeah. though the same tools will activate overload. Obviously, is a separate thing, but also then to just completely deplete, completely yeah. fatigue the muscle. The kind of the same tools in activation do kind of work. You'll see a lot of uh, I've seen it in some of John Meadows stuff too, where he'll do. What was he Mountain Dog on Instagram? Right? Yeah. Anyway, he uh, he'll do a lot of machine stuff, bodybuilding stuff, where when he gets to near failure, the range of motion gets almost there, and he'll have his partner just hold the machine, yeah. and he'll just and finish he'll with isometric it. because yeah. you fucking just will empty the Well, it goes into tank. extinction training. Yeah, basically. basically, that is basically that. Yeah. It's so it's extinction training. Yeah. Yep. And the, yeah, that's why, but enough. that's why the songs work so well. And we always like yep. I'm always coming up with songs because it allows you to have just random variables and yeah. it forces you to a be present. But you're holding for ten, you're holding tension for four minutes with thunderstruck yeah. five minutes, yeah. and you're not caring. Four, not you're not caring about is this rep eight, this rep yeah, nine. Yeah, just going. Two. You know, plus like, let's be honest. Like sometimes bodybuilding is boring. Mm -hmm. Counting the reps. Yeah. Like you sets of yeah. fifteen is boring as shit. Let's be I honest. I only go to pain. Well, <laughs> you're right. And you always, but you'll really never anymore. go to true pain. Like you always, yeah. you for me, yeah. like I always stop you at eight early. or twelve reps. I'm yeah. like, why the fuck did I even yeah. stop? You know, like if 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 the clock is running, you yeah. can get to twenty. Mm -hmm. I will realize that on the lunches. I was doing sets of fifteen. So I went to my set of one minute. I used the same weight, except yeah. I probably did thirty reps instead yeah. of fifteen. Even yeah. though at fifteen it was hurting. I was like, what that has to do with the pain networks yeah. um <laughs> hashtag <laughs> networks um but th th there's that element as well so by the way he was mentioning warm-up right yes let's talk real quick because that's one of the two things i wanted to talk about anyway so let's see. i can see. i can Game always over. kill this Game over. he's like Three he's, 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 he's like listen guys just the tip just the tip just right the now. tip like <laughs> it works like <laughs> you know who i'm talking about you know it works um if she's watching you know it works um Warm up. What is the point of a warm up, really? So uh, warming up. But what does that mean, really? So getting the fight mode ready. But going back to lactate. Uh, lactate is the best fuel for the heart, for the muscles, for the brain. Right. We mm -hmm. know that. Um, so that should be the point of a warm up. Yeah. Right. Is yeah. to so you start having producing lactate so you can use it as fuel in the main workout. So warm up should be what should be whatever allows you to produce. You know, to start producing the, the the lactate. So that doesn't mean necessarily getting uh, fucked up and doing front as a warm up, but it does mean at least getting a pump. Yeah. You know, getting all the stuff moving. Yeah. Like, because you're not gonna try to you coming off of work, you're kind of stressed, but you're kind of in freeze. The key is we're gonna need to change your state toward yeah. the fight mode, and we need you to produce lactate. So I think the easiest way to do both is to our isometric stuff, because yeah. you're gonna go to fight mode real yeah. fast, and by doing that and getting a pump, right? So that hold and reps, you're gonna produce lactate and then you're ready for your main workout. This yeah. state change often uncomfortable as well. Yeah. Like, cause for me, I was it always- It gets better as you- There's a reason people yeah. when they start to get lazy, the first things they phone in is their warm ups. You know, I used to do right. a lot. Yeah. I get going, it's yeah. like, ah, the last thing I wanna do is as I'm getting started, like get a pump and start breathing hard, get my heart mm -hmm. rate up. That change yeah. is kind of a lot of shit. It's like, I yeah. just kind of wanna jump into the water. I did. But it's necessary. Yeah, for me, the warm up is always 30 minutes of light cardio, just moving. I mean, usually it's just getting the to the gym. Walk, yeah. yeah, and then once I get there, it goes into, I mean, it's 30 crunches, leg lifts, and side crunches, but it's really more just isometric work on the core. Yeah. And it blows my temperature straight mm -hmm. up. Like I start sweating, and then heavy isometric works for the whole structure. You guys are making it's it so, so good. easy for me. Let's see what you got. <laughs> right. Let's hear it. So, <laughs> there's, the reason you can't change state. Is there's a network for it called the ventral attention network? Yeah. See, you guys are making it so easy. Um, <laughs> that happens to be in the right anterior insula, the, the active eye. Yeah. You'll notice is uh, really you going like, I don't want to do this. Like you can't switch mentally to, you don't want the pain starts, you're fine. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to go there. It's like going in cold water. Yeah. You don't want you in it, you're fine. Yeah. But you just can't get your fucking, you can't get your, <laughs> your yourself there, right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a bit the same thing for training. Like you, what you need to train is your capacity to change state. And at first, that means you're going to have to suck it up for two weeks and go into pain almost mm -hmm. right away. Don't, don't think, just go into it and eventually it gets easy. Okay. Like, this is like that fucking pussy who said like uh, to take six weeks to transition from the bed to the floor, yeah, yeah. right? And got all mad about it. Get mad yeah. about it. 
Um, suck it up. Don't think about it. Suck it up for two weeks. You adapt. Yeah. You're fine. And after that, it's completely normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm huge and just went straight from a big soft exactly. right to the floor. Give me a fucking break. Unless right. you, I don't know. I'm not worried about it. No, but so for training, it's going to do. It's going to be the same thing. Yeah. thing. Choose a good warm up that you know works. Right. We have the songs. We you have the five seconds, five reps, whatever. Choose that. When you get to the gym, go through it. Don't mm -hmm. think. Go through it. No. Just do it. By the time the pain starts to get to your head, you'll be just fine. What you need is you need to train your active eye. Yeah, You're going to get there, but you don't get to train your active eye by using words. Right. Because that's a default mode network. That's something else. That's the me and all that stuff. Don't think. Don't, oh, this is how I feel. Don't do it slowly. Like if I start with a pump, no, you're getting more words, meaning more lazy. You're getting further and further away. Yes, you it. get further yeah. away. What you need is suck it up. Have a good warm up and just work. stick to it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, you know who was talking about this all the time was um, the OG CrossFit dude with the fucking pecs. Greg Edmondson. Greg Edmondson. That if you look. Breathe and fire. Right. But he talked about yeah. the warm up saying get your mind right. Yeah. Yeah. Get mm -hmm. in the right state. Have the same warm up every time. Don't think. Just fucking do it. And then you'll be ready. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I think people overthink this. But not, not in the sense of overthinking like you're not paying attention enough. Overthinking using too many words. Yeah. So they overword this a lot. Yeah. They're trying to get to a different state by using words. And by definition, you cannot. That's the all only the mindset training that they're yeah. always talking about, which drives me nuts. It's, it's all words. Yeah, it's yeah. all self-talk. And you're like, just go fucking do the shit. Just yes, like mm -hmm. by definition, words cannot help you. Yeah. They, so even when you use words to prep yourself up, you, it's the, the state change that matters, not yeah. the words. No. Yeah. And, and those words aren't going to be there for you when you actually are there. That's the difference too. Right. Yes. And when you're in yeah. competition, that's yeah. why it doesn't work. Yeah. Because like now you're you're scared, you're, you're freaked out and everything. Mm -hmm. Words are not the key. What you need to learn to do is to learn to switch state at will. And it's 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 like going into cold water, right? At first, at first you're a bitch. I'm one. That's why I can say you're a bitch, because I'm definitely a bitch when it comes to cold water. <laughs> but you you know, like one time in Brazil, the the stuff oh, I don't know if you you must know that from Mexico, those tiny uh, water you know, warmer for showers, like, you know, they are about that big, no. electrical one. Uh -huh. Yeah, you never, oh, you there's have no, electrical. There's no hot water, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You have like so, 30 seconds of hot water. Yeah, so they have those <laughs> tiny electrical machines okay. that put the water through to warm it. Okay. Yeah. Warm it, it's not, yeah, yeah. see, you bunch of softies. So, yeah, he knows what I'm talking I about. I only look at it from a systems basis and I'm like, this is very flawed and dangerous. Yeah. So it possibly, like possibly, <laughs> electricity and water, what could go wrong? And the shit wasn't working, so like it was literally really cold water. By week two, I was like, yeah, I liked it. Yeah. Right, so I had to suck it up. The first week, I was not happy. But um, I like how circumstances just drop their way upon you, and then you yep. just kind of live more like a homeless person. Like you were like, oh, I just kind of slept on the floor one time, and now 30 years later, I sleep on the floor. Yeah, you're like, I had this busted ass <laughs> thing, so cold water now forever. Yeah. <laughs> there's something to be said about homelessness. Um, like there's no social isolation. Shoes. There's no, yeah, no <laughs> shoes. <laughs> see, I'm not for social isolation either. See, right? I, I'm Jules. Remember uh, Pulp Fiction? Yes. Yeah, I'm yes. Jules. I'm just going to walk the earth, man. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Right. That's, you have to train yourself to switch state, basically. Yeah. And that, again, do not use words. They don't work. Yeah. Just fucking don't be a bitch. So, this one I like a lot. To what extent do epigenetics play in the protocol? For example, oh. could there be changes on an epigenetic level that are happening which help with digestion, yes. using certain fuels, etc.? Or has this been overplayed by the keto advisors? Okay, so those are two different things. Keto advisors and uh, epigenetics yeah. are two different things. First of all, epigenetics is a massive, massive thing. Like, mm -hmm. do not, you cannot overplay epigenetics. No. It is most likely more important than genetics itself. Mm -hmm. Like you have a base, genetic base, but it's only expressed through epigenetics. So epigenetics is the main thing. Mm -hmm. Now, it, did the protocol uh, was based on that? Yes, because if you look like circadian rhythm, all that stuff, that's part of epigenetics in that sense. Right? Mm -hmm. Epigenetics means what? Means the environment activating certain genes in you. Yeah. Actually, changing sorry. the way they express. Exactly. I was about to say, changing the expression of the genes, not right. the genes, the expression of the genes, right? So circadian rhythms, all that stuff, all the states, that's exactly what this is about. And we've seen on the protocol, for example, people that were severely lactose intolerant, being able to have uh, cheese, again. dairies, and no reaction whatsoever, just by clearing, uh, clearing up the signal. Mm -hmm. So that's actually what the point of the protocol was. 
was that, was the epigenetics, gene expression, yeah. which a lot of it, so epigenetics, will be based on circadian rhythms, states of the nervous system, all that stuff, which yeah. is the more I read, the more it proves my point on the, on the protocol. And then as we look further into epigenetics, we can see, though, there's a lot of things like, you know, foods, bad food, good food, processed foods. Um, you're starting to see there are basically change, epigenetic yes. changes right. so let, based let's go over upon those how two. you consume. Let's go over those yeah. two. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the keto diet for a second. Keto diet being, being, means being in ketosis, mm -hmm. right? That does not mean low carbs. Right. Correct. Right. I think for a lot of people, you have to understand. Yeah. Ketosis and low carbs are not the same thing. When I was doing... Ketosis and not having an excess of carbs. Right. But no, when? No, no, I was having an excess of carbs. Yes, yeah, so when? So, yes, exactly. So it's not yeah. excessive. But yeah. you could be in ketosis. But the, the, the thing is, was the insulin resistance. And so you, you would start off with a base of 30 grams of carbs. Mm -hmm. And then after three weeks, you would start to increment the carbs, seeing where your resistance was to be able to stay in ketosis. Right, on top of it. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, and then we introduced a new idea, which is to have the carbs during training. Right. Which uh, still allowed us to be. Which allowed us to do whatever we wanted because there's no insulin spike right. in hard training. Mm -hmm. So there was no insulin resistance yeah. being built from the carbs. So what I did, and so we tested it with Richard's dad. Yeah. Well, that's the time where I was having a liter and a half of chocolate milk Multiple. every time I trained. Yeah. yeah. So 150 grams of sugar. In that era, that. guys, there was chocolate <laughs> cartons fucking everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It was a full thing and a half per training session. Yeah. I, can't, I can't believe I did that. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> I was like, man, I should test it again. <laughs> um, and then Richard's dad um, the, tested the, me, and yeah. I was at that 1.0. Yeah. I was in ketosis. After three weeks. After right. three weeks of doing that shit. But I was having no carbs outside of my window of carbs during training. Yeah, yeah. And again, we, I did not build up an uh, insulin resistance um, with the carbs. Why? Because when you train, you lower the insulin spike. Yeah, and there's no surplus then. And there it's was no surplus. Use. So I was in keto while having 150 grams of sugar a day. So I think it's very important that people do not confuse ketosis and low carb diet. Also then, the people who say it doesn't really matter as much when you eat they're wrong. It's like that's fucking such They're bullshit. Wrong. Yep. Because like that also like like how many how yeah. many grams of uh, of actual carbs is that? One hundred fifty grams. One hundred fifty grams or so. Mm -hmm. So one hundred fifty yeah. grams would be not even like a crazy. But it was amount. mostly sugar. But yeah, it was like yeah. mostly sugar. So yeah. I just think that like you could have that throughout your day and it wouldn't be a big deal. But no. that would be a massive excess. Yeah, in exactly. general, yeah. it would be right. you, it would you would not be in sugar. ketosis, not be Fuck. even yeah, fucking exactly. close. Oh, yeah, thinking no about it though. Yeah, a little bit. I, 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 it a bit. <laughs> well, I, I was in the testing phase, so I had the right. I'm trying to think of how many grams of sugar are in like a can of Mountain Dew. I think it's like 60. Like 20 yeah, or 30? Six, no, 30? no, no, Is no, it 60? It's like 60, It's super dude. high. Okay. It's crazy. Mountain Dew. Yeah. Getting hopped up on Mountain Dew. Dude, I remember <laughs> yeah. the Mountain Dew days, man. The Mountain Dew. Yeah. Not, to be young and naive. Fuck. No, I mean, but I, so yeah. but the problem is when you have the Mountain Dew at rest, not doing anything, yeah. you get a massive insulin spike from the sugar. Yeah. Right. That's so serotonin levels, all the stuff, but that's also like the insulin resistance come from that. I could not have that insulin spike, or at least not nearly as high, because I was in major, uh, in a major stress response. So it's not, yeah, it's everything is timing. Yeah. And by the way, the, so the difference between the protocol and the keto diet is that we can have the carbs we want. Uh, I don't know if I'm in ketosis right now or not. Honestly, I have no idea. Uh, probably not because I have potatoes in the morning. But the the point, like even if I follow the early protocol, uh, ketosis, which means you have protein all day long and the protocol, you don't. Yeah. So mine was never about the food itself. Mine was about respecting circadian rhythms and timing of macronutrients based on action. Okay. Based, based, so it was about state of your nervous system and circadian rhythms. That's always always was the point of the protocol. So it's not a keto diet. Yeah. But I mean, now they're not calling it keto diet. Now it's the carnivore diet. It's the one that's starting to take. I mean, that's the yeah, new it's one, right? Essentially, the we went from macros to keto is, to carnivore diet. I don't even know. Carnivore, is the carnivore just meat with no vegetables. It's just all. <laughs> yeah, I think all they do is have meat. Just lots and lots of. But, the, but it's all red meat, which still seems like crazy hard on the digestion. Yeah, but plus it's not sustainable. Right. Like. Do hot dogs count? <laughs> You, I think they <laughs> might. I don't know. Uh, no, but it's not. What, what, what kills me with all of this is if you can't follow it for two years, like, right. like I'm two years in at least on the protocol by now. Yeah. It has to be two years ago, right? I don't know. 
think. So. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, I would say. But it has to be. Pretty I close. No idea. Pretty close. But let's say two years, right? Um, I keep on getting better. I'm not, you, you know, like if you're depriving yourself, which means every time you smell a croissant, you're having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. with a, I need right. this. So it's like, I don't crave shit yeah. anymore. I don't crave anything. Like I, uh, I'll have a piece of dark chocolate like this, that big for the taste. Mm -hmm. Like the bitterness of it. Yeah. And oh, by the way, my taste palette has changed completely. Yeah. You know, like even drinks, I don't like sweet anymore. Yeah. I get, uh, I, it took me two years, but I don't like sweet anymore. He's not I, a scotch. Yeah. And, uh, and mezcal still. <laughs> like the smokiness I like a lot. Um, the, but, you know, like two years later, I'm better, not worse. Not, my cravings have, have gone away completely. Like I enjoy my food more and more and more. My entire body is, is getting used to the food, understanding it's doing me good. So I get better at it. Yeah. Like th those, like the carnivore diet, that doesn't seem sustainable for me. I understand that like Dr. Jordan Peterson did it for autoimmune reasons. But uh, there's a bunch of guys on it saying, oh, I feel better, but I'm like, but yeah, but you can't train as hard as. Like feeling better, usually what it means now means I can see my abs better. Yeah. That's crazy. That to me is crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. I have another one that I want to tie into this one, skipping ahead just a touch, because I want to touch on, say, food quality, yeah. GMO, organic, Talk about epigenetics. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. does eating non-organic or GMO negate the protocol or diminish... Uh, the intended results due to the use of preservatives, pesticides, chemicals. Right. So be, uh, the two main issues when it comes to that, honestly, I think is the pesticides, chemicals, and is the animal sick? Because mm -hmm. that's not yeah. the yeah. question, but I think that's the main one. When you, By the way, so co going back to the carnivore diet, if all you eat is red meat in the States. That's from Costco, they're like the mm -hmm. cheap right. stuff from Ralph's. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're fucked. Right. So yeah. now you're eating chickens that are... You know, like in those those, those boxes, cages, those cages, they and can't they can't walk after force. three weeks. And I'm telling yeah. you this, I have seen chicken breasts in the store in the United States that are yeah, yeah. bigger Massive. than mine. Right. I'm yeah. like, uh, it's it's like it's like what in the you see yeah. you've seen here from a real chickens. You see the difference between yeah. the two. Yeah. Once you start traveling, yeah. you start noticing the chicken shit. breasts are approximately 25 percent the size they are here. Yeah. They don't yeah. still really taste like no, anything, and, but yeah. it's still that's the nature of chicken. But, but I've heard like. <laughs> chicken and pork here the quality is not that good but the beef is yes but i mean i source everything like all my quality like i have my butcher shop i have my fish shop because it's you, then you don't need to eat that much like yeah. I, I, yeah. I i love believe me i can gorge on steak all day but if i have like a nice piece of steak i'm good with 300 400 grams mm -hmm. like i don't need sometimes yeah. even less depending on the sauce you put on it but the quality the food matter it matters so much as to how you feel afterwards yeah Right. And like, uh, speaking of quantity, you know, like they always say the French eat less. Yeah. That's true, but that's also because the products are of better quality. Yeah. So you get more nutrients out of it. Yeah. So yeah. technically, they're not eating less. They're just having less quantity because they have more quality. Yeah. Right. So in the, in the US like that, you probably need twice as much chicken to get as much protein right. mm -hmm. in because of digestion issues and the quality of the meat itself. Yeah. And whatever stress, whatever chemicals, antibiotic, anything yeah, in, the, that's meat, yeah. in, in yes. the animal. The other thing that people don't maybe understand is where, where I'm from, we hunt a lot. Wild game is hunted quite often. I also know quite a few people who harvest or who, who raise their own livestock, raise their own cattle. So it's not this huge, awful operation. The difference in meat between, say, uh, my friend Gerald's farm, when we get mm -hmm. meat from there, versus even decent meat at the grocery store, it is night and day. Yeah. Yeah. And the difference sure. is, is Gerald, the very least, knows exactly what he's putting. And he's still using a lot of these standard protocols that you totally. would in that yep. industry right? right so there is probably some sort of yeah. well, medication this and, or something yeah. and, you know but i'll be goddamned if that meat doesn't look smell and taste and make you feel so much better and you can yeah. tell just from looking at it no but like people have to understand that in the u.s for example the um, uh the cows eat corn and um candies and they give sugar. It's mm -hmm. basically sugar. sugar. Yeah. yeah. It's just and sugar. to make them uh, grow bigger. And, and, and you mentioned earlier the stress of the, on the animal, a sick animal. Yeah. Uh, it's not just sick animal that matters in the way it tastes and what ends up in the meat. Often, right. very often, an animal that is stressed. If you hunt a deer and you fucking don't get a quick kill, it's you got to track that thing for even 
20 right. or 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, every bit of meat you might get in there might taste fucked up. Right. You might yeah. pull out yeah. of the Even like the fish, yeah. like the Japanese way of killing the fish where they cut the head off and they have to go through the spinal cord right to right. cut all the nerves, yeah. otherwise the meat rots. Yeah, exactly. But they know that, for example, in a Jewish and Muslim religion, yeah. they, you know, the halal, all that stuff, yeah. they were, for example, like he was the... Yeah, it was the um, in the Jewish tradition, like they sliced the throat mm-hmm. of yeah. the. Um, oh, it's a very certain way of killing it. Certain yeah. way of killing it, it, it out. so that um, it's so sharp, the animal doesn't feel anything, so it never stresses mm-hmm. out because otherwise the meat is just not the same. Yeah, We've yeah. known that culturally for a long time, yeah, so but you've seen all the documentaries in the U.S. where the cows, like you know, with that green shit, they have cancer, mm-hmm. they're sick, they have to strip them yeah. completely of any bacteria and stuff and then they put the taste back in after yeah it was a, like yeah. all the processing in the u.s is that is and they don't they get me kill started everything. on the fish the salmon right so oh, yeah. Here's, yeah. My, here's my here's my favorite <laughs> don't get me started but i'm gonna go into here's it my yeah. favorite thing is so i have some friends, that friends that would go, that, or some friends that would go up to uh i believe up to in alaska in the area and they would just harvest a shit ton of salmon they would bring yeah. them back and it was like well what's the difference between over there it said something like some other brand salmon it was the same color Kind of, yeah, and the yeah. same price. And, and he's like, well, look up salmon in that area. And it's like, they're not. It's farmed it's salmon. Farm, it was like Atlantic salmon trout. or something yeah. like yeah. that. And it's like, it's like, oh, no, it's not from an ocean. It's from a farm. And that meat is gray. Yeah. yeah, and so they feed them dyed pellets, and they dye the to meat too. Dye if you go to Costco yeah. and you go buy salmon, you look at you it and it's leaf. painted. Yeah. It's dyed. And it says on their ingredients there'll be uh, some form of salmon, and then it says uh, dye. Uh, that, that's been in moving from the states to Europe. That's been one thing I've looked in very much into the additives that are different yeah. between the two. And it's so weird. Most of the additives that are say banned in Europe that are still used in the states are like for aesthetics, color, yeah. right? Like coloring, tomatoes. Yeah, fucking tomatoes. tomatoes. I had not had a tomato that tasted like a tomato for years until yeah. I came here. Yeah. It got worse every year in the states and, until I left. And, and you notice that here they're not red. Not always. Not and yeah. not the type of red, not yeah. like that apple red yeah. that but, they have but in they the taste US. It. Yep. They taste like a tomato. It tastes like a tomato. Like, yes. you don't color exactly. it more like a tomato. Make it taste like one of right. yeah, no, but, but The vegetable quality here is so much nicer. That's I mean, that's crazy. why we go to the market every yeah. day because yeah. you have veggies for two days and then they start rotting mm-hmm. which yeah. is, should happen. Exactly. I mean, yeah. the, the potatoes <laughs> start to sprout, start to right sprout away. almost within a day. Yeah. You in go like that. They stay there for three months and they still look exactly the same. What do you think on the GMO thing? My thing, truthfully, with just GMOs, genetically modified foods, I don't really know. Okay, so w- w- that's fa- what I, by the that's way, my stance, I don't fucking GMO, know. GMO, it's we've always modified food. We've been mm-hmm. trying to, uh, you know, like it's cross the plant things. version of animal, well, even bananas, if yes, you will. Yes, exactly. We always which probably has that. a real yeah. scientific term that I just don't yeah. know. <laughs> no, no, but there's that. So, but then they went into gene splicing. That's the wheat in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now the problem is that now we're starting to touch into things. The, the real issue is that we don't understand. Yeah, and that's the piece. Because we don't, don't understand, understand epigenetics. That and we don't understand our epigenetics, but yeah. we do understand that food and environment plays It was the industrialization role. of food, though. I mean, you, there, there's so many documentaries out there, and I probably won't get all the numbers right, but there used to be over 200 variations of corn, yeah. and now there's three. Yeah. And Same yeah. with bananas in the and, U.S. And, there's that one banana that's now basically yeah. killed all the crops in... South America, so now they're in Thailand, and they're doing the same exact thing in Asia yeah. now. Yeah, and corn they, ain't for eating anymore. No, yeah. by the way, feed it to livestock pe- or pe- you drink people it. don't understand, but yeah. those things, uh, there's an ecosystem within plants as well. Yeah. They kill each other. Mm-hmm. They kill each other. So they are predators and things. Like yeah. there's a type of corn that just takes we'll over destroy. everything. Something, yeah, for the banana. Like it's there's an ecosystem there. My only problem is we're fucking with an ecosystem. Mm-hmm. That means like we're fucking with the bees and eventually we're going to have a problem and so what we will do we will have genetically modified bees i'm like how about we don't fuck with nature in the first place yeah, no. like this is where the whole like crisis right now upsets me is like you're reacting with the best intention in the world mm-hmm. and it's all great but that purity of feeling this can we Take this over the entire thing, like to all the other issues that are a part of this problem, and on a continuous timeline. Yeah. Because four weeks from now, we're yeah. going to go back to exactly the yeah. same. Three months from now, the world is exactly as it was. Yeah. Nothing has changed. You don't see nothing has changed. People will still eat themselves to death. We'll still sell soda to them, and pesticide, you know, That's pesticide yeah. meat that. Meat has cancer, and then you eat that. What you think? Yeah, on the gene, on, can you imagine what it does to you? Yeah, and the, one of the biggest problem we are facing is the agro uh, agricultural uh, 
Sure. Agricultural sure. Uh, system we have, especially mm -hmm. oh, in the US. So fucked. Yeah, it's completely yeah. fucked and it's extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one of the main issues we have. So we got a movement question here. What are the best ways to cure upper and lower cross syndromes? Are they linked by IT chain weakness? If we're gonna go uh, cross, you know, if we're gonna go into the fascia, that's it's a bit of a long road. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a long road because IT chain weaknesses most likely uh, simple exercise at home. Um, try to engage the outside head of the bicep, right? And you'll notice that to do that, you're gonna have to engage the inside head of the bicep, and then you can get to the outside head. But unless I do this, I can't get to the outside head of the bicep, right? So outside head is external torque. Inside it's internal torque. I need to engage the internal torque to get to the external torque. You see that on the pecs as well. Like try to engage the upper pec. You'll have to move your shoulder. If you want, don't want to move your shoulder, you'll have to engage the lower part of the pec in order to get to the upper part of the pec. Otherwise, like that, I can't do it, right? So you always have to engage internal torque to get to external torque. So the internal torque chain throughout the body is what connects everything. So a weak internal torque chain will always result in certain muscles non engaging. Yeah. Right? And so that would be, I don't know that is necessarily the root cause of uh, cross issues, but there's also be many right there. causes of IT internal torque weaknesses as well. There's many other yeah. now the, many yeah. things that can drop in. Right, this. exactly. But uh, are they going to have. Uh, so, yeah, I would say they're at least related to the cross issues, definitely. By the way, if anyone wants to put together a highlight reel, since we've got this uh, this bench here <laughs> of me and the difference between me and Julian's hip mobility, you see every time, getting every time comfortable. Julian just spots his, spots his crosses his leg yeah. and, and Tyler is like I'm I'm literally grabbing my leg. You can hear me go ah, fuck, all right, pop. <laughs> is that is that a cross issue? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know what that one is. Uh, I do have another question. I thought was just funny. It said, "How will the podcast be in ten years?" And I remember... How was Strong Fit being how 10 was, years? How was Strong Fit 10 years ago? You know, that's always... But I, I think it's a good question. I'll... Uh, I'll ex right? 10 2010. Fuck, 2010. I didn't have the gym then. Where was I 2010? Was 20, I in 2009, year? I barely opened up my gym. I was just getting started. No, no. 2010, I had the gym because that's... The, the crash was 2008. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had the gym for two years. Fuck, was I struggling. Good timing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I was... I had the gym for two years. Uh, in 2010... Uh, I was struggling. Yeah. I was back then. I think that's when I had the CrossFit affiliate around that time. I had the Jiu Jitsu school in my gym and then I was firing my third partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rent was way too high. I had made every single mistake business wise you could make. Um, I had welded, like you haven't seen that gym, but I had um, welded like a $5,000. Your whole thing cost yeah. me five thousand uh, dollars, like to to have like a super uh, beam in order to do pull ups and shit like that, <laughs> which you could do the whole thing. Yeah, anchor a car on, which of course. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, that uh, that's the only debt I've ever had in business was that one. Yeah. So it's funny is that in ten years, I always tell everybody in business, anyways, is that ten years is, you don't. It's three black swan events. You don't even. You don't See even it. bother. Yeah. Yeah. In my opinion, when I if I make a decision right now, mm -hmm. I don't think how does this represent the business in ten years? Truthfully, not even five. Right. But you want to. Two years. I mean, it's always the, the my... progression towards the future, right? So you yeah. start to see it was a podcast with the guy that created Waze, I believe, and he was talking after Google bought him out, and he goes, "So like, what do you think is coming up in ten years?" And he goes, "You know, if you if you're not trying to progress, which mm -hmm. I, you're seeing quite a bit right now in the yeah. fitness industry, if you're not trying to progress." your your system is dead yeah. and he goes you know you can think about it very simply you know think of something very small automated driving like if car if people don't start understanding yeah. you know car manufacturers don't start understanding that automated cars means you can have less cars on the road mm -hmm. now you need how you have less cars on the road now let's take a world in 10 years where you can see that rather than you having to buy a car you have an app like uber and they just come pick you up and drop you off anywhere you want so why would you even need to have a car? So now you don't need to have a garage and now you don't need to do this. And now insurance needs to change and policies. And, and he's like, you know, you have to think about where is the gap coming in 10 years and are you progressing towards it? Yeah. And what's going to cascade around that too? And I think with fitness, I mean, not within the podcast, but we're constantly progressing towards that where most people are still trying to get stuck on eight weeks selling yeah. programs. Yeah. yeah. If you're and, still fucking around macros right now, what are you doing? 
Like, did yeah. you do macros yeah. better than anybody else? You fucking, you know what I mean? Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. There's 5,000 people doing macros right now. And that, if you want to double down on that, I, I guess. Um, but, but that's not the game I want to play. Speaking about the future, I want to do an over on I got right fired now. on the podcast today. Yeah. I, want to, <laughs> I want to do an over on there on that one. I want to make a bet that a year from now, the nervous system has arrived in the fitness industry. Yeah. I'm not saying it's because yeah. we started it, but I can tell you that a year from now, you will hear... Let's go nervous system, but let's go above nervous system because they, they've been talking about CNS for a long time and right. renal fatigue. Right. So the phylogenetic hierarchy. Let's talk about that. The, <laughs> the wheel, yeah, the wheel is, is happening in the fitness industry. Because we're starting to see it, yet nobody, you were the one that drew it. I mean, it went like mine. Steve Entire Ford just had the system, but there was the wave. It was never the no circle. No one had the wheel. I'm the only one with the circle. I'm the one who created the wheel. The phylogenetic uh, yeah. uh, uh, hierarchy wheel is mine. I'm the one who came up with it. No one else drew it. So we start to see it taught in Quite seminars. And we are not being, by the way, which I'm very happy to see, but we are not being tagged on it or give credit. Yeah, and I think I've this seen is it. science. Science, you give credit. That's yeah. the way this works. Yeah, I think I've seen it first in your seminar, maybe the first like, 2016, 2016. Yeah, maybe? yeah. yeah. We started talking about it. We started talking. No, but we have posts about it. Yeah. We have like this is ours. Yeah. Like there's no question on that. And now so we want it to be used to have. But just yeah. give of credit. Course, you, you know what I don't want. What I'm getting frustrated about is people talking about it like they came up with it. Yeah. That's when I'm like, no, just give credit. Use it totally, but. Give us credit yeah. because that's the way this works. Yeah. I, I never use anybody uh, work without quoting them first. By the way, didn't, don't you owe me something since they didn't use the pec stick? I mean, they did, but they didn't put it on the video on Instagram for CrossFit as a warm up. Well, we never came up with the, we never did the post. No. We came up the stuff. He wants to make me do a budget jumping. That's why. Oh, you shit. want me to get a tattoo. I think it's only fair <laughs> that that was done. <laughs> that's true. I mean, there were hefty stakes on both sides. Yes. There were, there were hefty stakes on both sides. But the, so the wheel is coming, and then from there, it's going to go into, uh, yeah, fight, flight, freeze, all that yeah. stuff, which means they'll try to go toward some part of neuroscience. Yeah. That is coming, and that's because yeah. we started it. And even, even with them, like, you're starting to see people talk about internal tension and external tension. Or internal rotator, uh, uh, internal no, external rotation torque. Yeah, yeah. come that on. That was a squat Give university. A yeah. yeah, I think, and still fucking it up because they're still yeah. not, not understanding, understanding the concept. Yeah. But yeah, I, when I, and I think as as an organization, we're pretty transparent as far as in how we kind of operate, anyways. Yeah. And I think uh, to think where what we'll be doing ten years from now, I don't think anybody really know what we're gonna do next month is what we want to do next month. And the month after I, that, we're going to do I don't what we even want to know do where I'll be in a year from now. Yeah. I mean, I lease this house for two years, so I can tell you where I'll be. We'll be here. <laughs> uh, yeah, two years from now. Like That's in about Amsterdam so far. far. Yeah. I do like Amsterdam, yeah. Amsterdam a lot. Yeah. Like, even the people here are very yeah. different. The food, we it's found actually good, good restaurants. Yeah. So, uh, as far and as, I'm digging this house. I really like my office. Like, oh, I'm happy here. As far as like projects, subject matter, we have no Who idea. Who the we just fuck chase, knows? Yeah, Do you know where down. I was two years ago? Yeah. Like, look at those, all the stuff in the last year, yeah. six months ago. Yeah. I, I never, by definition, but I never know what I'm going to know. So two yeah. years from now, who knows? Yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm talking to got, PhDs in neuroscience at yeah. well, I mean, Berkeley or some shit like that. We still have projects, courses that we've built very enthusiastically and then had better ideas that we work on now. I mean, there's still, so many, mean things, yeah. Yeah, there's still so many things we're juggling that we just always are going to use your experience, by the way, yeah, we yeah. still like, we still need to do stuff, uh, go back to movement more. So maybe yeah. more podcasts, but like, so 10 years from now, I hope that we're better and alive. 56. That's a start. Yeah. <laughs> maybe have another kid. Who knows? I mean, like, uh, who the fuck knows? I mean, dude, I take nothing for granted. <laughs> So uh, that is the that question. Where am I at? Oh, we got time. We got plenty of time. You have a, I can raise your kids. Why don't you have kids? <laughs> I'll be fine. That's why I, can, I get to give it back. <laughs> uh, is it true that there are a lot of workouts in normal CrossFit programming that are like the burn the question session? For example, ex assault bike intervals. Okay. Fran. <laughs> yes. Not intervals. Fran. Fran. Grace. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about this. However, yeah. the skill level on some of those might be a bit... But you have to get to barrier, that. You right? have to get to that threshold first. Yeah. I mean, for the first two and a half, three years, Fran will most definitely destroy you. Yeah. 
Every single time it should destroy you. Yeah. Same with grace. Anything, and I guess I'm guessing if it's scaled properly, right? Because if your skill level, I'm talking for the sake of the West scale. On a right. No, no. But session, let's talk right? about let's talk about what the CrossFit workout were supposed to be. Mm -hmm. The way Greg Glassman explained it at the beginning means you do grace, you get a heart attack at rep 28. Yeah. So his thing was you're never supposed to finish a workout. In, in a way, mm -hmm. finishing a workout is a fail. Yeah. Right. So in that case. Yeah, you can do a burn the question on grace, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. Right, are there, now we can go into ways, are there yeah. better ways of doing that long term? Depending on your current level. Yeah, yeah. and long term it's probably a lot better to do a burn the question on a sled than it is with a barbell because the joints, because a number of things. In order to be able to maintain uh, yeah. that kind of stuff, sustainability wise, it's better on a sled. But, but if you want to go there, you can go there in plenty of those workouts. Right, but you're not going to go there in interval training. Yeah. Like, first of all, like that idea you're that... Pace. Right, you're going to pace. That idea that you can do one minute on, one minute off on an airdyne and go burn the question mm -hmm. is complete bullshit. No one does it. it it's not, that's not the way this works. Mm -hmm. it, but if you want to go like 60 seconds max cal on an airdyne, fuck yeah. yeah. Rest five well, minutes, do it again. Yeah, yeah that's a burn the question. That was Andrew's workout that he had that was like a burn the questions, but it was like 100 calories on the salt bike. Then you rest. I think it was like two minute rest. And then you bike for the time that it took you to get the 100 calories to try and get as many calories. Then you rest, and then you go for those calories for time. I did the first 100 calories. I got on the second yeah. one. I think I got three calories in. I just started puking and fell on yeah, the side of the exactly. Like, I could right. not go. Yeah. You're not supposed to yeah. be able to... That's the thing they don't understand. Like, this is very interesting. Like I see the same way I look at IQ. How was IQ invented? IQ was invented in France by a dude who created the, the, those series of questions not to test the kids. They actually were designed to test the teachers yeah. of the kids. So they were going to do the IQ on the kids, and the kids that have low IQ means that the teachers teacher didn't do the job. Yeah. So that was a way to judge the teachers. And of course, now what is it? Yourself. It's the kids yeah. being tested. Right. So it was the same thing with the five rounds. Right. People now have that objective mindset of, I'm going to go to five rounds. So they pace the shit out of it in order to think the win is five rounds. Well, actually, no, the win, was, the win is to do it one round and die completely. And then over time, you can rest and do a second round. And when you're a CrossFit game athlete, three rounds. Or, but then, yeah. but then they started to have that race of, let's see, three rounds. Let's do hero workouts. And all they got out of that is everybody's pacing. The people that we saw that are the worst at burner questions are CrossFitters. Yeah. And some good ones, too. <laughs> they, they mean, it means yeah. nothing. Like the ones where we saw could uh, burn the questions were football players, Rugby's. some Olympic weightlifters, you know who else can do explosive it? You know athletes. who else can do it too is people who come right off the street because they don't fucking know any better. They just right. go. Yeah. They it's go and they're, like, they're like, all right, I One round. I'm here, I'm just trying to do whatever. Yeah. One round, and they go. will just go. And... Which is the first year and a half of CrossFit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember my first, John, uh, he came to my, my first CrossFit gym and we were doing Kelly, which is one of my favorite workouts because it has box jumps, wall balls, and running. I mean, how could it not be? And it's five rounds of that. Preaching to the wrong group. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> and everybody's like starting to pace. And John just fucking bolts it. And I was like, oh, this is going to be so good. He comes in running. And people are coming after him. He's like, Do they, does he know it's five rounds? And I was like, who gives a fuck? It's going to be good. Yeah. And yeah. everybody starts moving. And second round, he takes off running. He comes back. And you're like, you could just see the pain face right yeah. away. About two and a half rounds in, he just like, oh, I think he just started puking, abs yeah. were cramping. And I was like, this is beautiful. You can stop I, if you want. <laughs> and, that's the, and that's the point of the workout. That's yeah. my, the, the thing I want to people to understand. You're supposed to do that. You're supposed right. to die two and a half rounds into Kelly. You're not supposed to finish. Stop the objective mindset of I need to, to beat the workout. You're not well, beating shit. I think a lot of people worry so much about, yeah, like the time and the finish and what they don't do is actually would think that the objective there is to die. But, but you have to remember you know what I mean? that, like that's not the objective die. anymore. Yeah. The objective now is trying to do as much volume as possible because it mm -hmm. should give me the best results for yeah. aesthetics, yeah. for the six pack. What, what I would do sometimes if I had, I would have athletes that yeah. would do a lot of general CrossFit training but would want more strength focus. What I would find is they don't know how to fucking like, Go like bring yeah. down the fucking hammer when wow. it's time, and you wonder why you can't squat heavy when there's you know what I mean you, can, you just yeah, don't right. have it. So I would start often within your CrossFit workouts, whatever your workouts are. If someone's doing two, three a week, whatever those are, t pick a shot and take it. Right. In that workout, somewhere in there, from a pacing standpoint, do something very fucking stupid and irresponsible, and just totally yeah. hamstring yourself. Like come out of the gates hot, 
and fucking just see how long you can hang on. That's, that or, was my approach. Or, or, or halfway through, <laughs> or, or if you have one of those fifteen or twenty minute fucking chippers, it's just yeah. everybody sits there and barely sweats and kind of rolls their eyes mm-hmm. and then lays on the floor and pretends to be out of breath afterwards. Is halfway through, decide to go as hard as you possibly fucking can until you die. Yeah. Right. See if you can die forty percent, fifty percent, it just whatever. But do something different than just lug that out and check a fucking time and, and then leave the gym. Like yeah. what the fuck is that? Well. Maybe that's a podcast we should do the three of us. But um, when it comes to all this, we need to talk about what people truly want, right? Yeah. Because the whole like making fun of global gyms, like uh, my warm up is your workout, uh, like you're just doing this to get the guns or whatever, has unfortunately kind of put CrossFitters in a corner mm-hmm. where, let's be honest, like the reason most people started CrossFit is because they saw the CrossFit Games athletes and they go like, oh my God, they look awesome. Yeah. The girls were like, I want to look like that woman. And the guys were like, I want to have the abs of that guy. Mm-hmm. Why did I, I try CrossFit at first? Because of Greg Anderson, because I was like, I want to look like that. Same thing, I started lifting weights because I want to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Most people, that's what they want. They want to look like their idols. But everybody's pretending that that's not the case. Yeah. because of making fun of Global Gym and all that stuff. So there's that entire culture, and I'm talking about CrossFit, entire culture of training, pretending that this is not to look good. Yeah. You know what I mean, so now it's, it leads to, I need to do five rounds. I need to do this. I need to do that. I'm like, and they do five rounds because they think they're going to burn more calories. Or like, so there's that fucked up mentality behind the scenes that happens with a big ass excuse in front. No. And the gap between the two it's the same thing as a somatic error, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And so they're trying to make the workout look a certain way while giving people what they want, which is looking good naked. But so they're kind of taking CrossFit. Serving two masters there. And it exactly. Yeah. And you, you can never have two objectives. You can have two, two constraints, but you can never have two objectives. And I think that's where the main, main mm. problem we see with programming in CrossFit is that. They're going to give people what they want while pretending that this is what Greg Glassman came up with. Yeah. If you want to look like those people, you're going to have to learn to push. Yeah. And you're not them anyway, by the way. This is a housekeeping question. <laughs> Can I cancel any time on the monthly support page uh, yes, that I choose? Is there a mandatory amount of us. months to, to be paid? Uh, mandatory? Nope, nope, yes. Can... All of you have to pay $5 <laughs> yes. a month, minimum. Yep. So there is, a, actually, there are options. I will turn this into a whole Gen page. We, we did set up, too, where there is a... Of the one-time donations too. So if you want to make one, two, three, four, you can do that. You can do it, or you can do monthly. But either way, you can cancel whenever you want. So all of you need to pay five dollars. Everyone, everyone, <laughs> pay my rent, Jedi mind trick. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. <laughs> my rent is the rent you must be paying for. Yeah. Uh, how does the auto regulation, nutrition, and training protocols affect? differ or improve for those of us who are on the autism spectrum or with other mental disorders and why are so many it's not people a disorder. well that that was actually also in quotes so i'll give them maybe yeah, okay. they were speaking of uh but why are so many people including medical professionals resistant to applying something like <laughs> these sure. protocols All right so let me start first um i've seen that time and time and time again for people on the autism spectrum sugar is your enemy mm-hmm. There's no question. I think sugar is everybody's enemy, but I think it's enemy number one for people on the spectrum. I've seen that with me. I've seen that with my daughter. I've seen that with a number of people. Sugar makes us aggressive, unhappy, bitchy, bad thing, mm-hmm. right? And that, that extends to carbs. My guess is it extends to caffeine as well. Uh, stimulants, so people on the spectrum should stay away Everybody's on the spectrum, but people are on the spectrum err, um, should stay away from stimulants and especially sugar. Like it's just, it's just really bad for us. Yeah. So that doesn't mean you can cut yourself off right away, even though uh, you need to. So we're going to start with the early part of the protocol where you can have sugar, but only when you train. That seems to really lessen the shock of it. But eventually the goal is to take yourself off of sugar and most likely um, outside of starch resistant carbs, just no carbs, no sugar. So only start resistant carbs, basically, mostly in the morning. And but the idea is get yourself off sugar. On the, if you're on the spectrum, it's just it's not good for you, man. Yeah. I've seen it like my daughter is not the same human being when she has sugar. And you, you can tell on her face she's unhappy. She does not like herself. Like it's it's. They have two kids. I have Yaya, who's the sweetest thing, super innocent, 
uh, the one we all love, and then there's the Yaya on sugar. It's not the same person. Yeah. You've mentioned even a couple of times about how, with especially when we talk about clarity of signals, yeah. That though when there's, when you introduce sugar or carbs like that, it just becomes real fucking noisy. Oh, it's so noisy, you know? man. And I have such and negative more higher style. sensitivity to the noise maybe than the average person too. So yes. it just makes it worse. No, and and I get very negative in my thought patterns. There's an entire thing there, which I think actually neuroscience explains very well. Let me go into the. No, I'm joking. But um, <laughs> the, there's the the negative thought patterns start to pop up like real fast and i've seen that with yaya as well and i talked to a few people on the spectrum and i saw the same thing okay. it's it's mean mm -hmm. so now why do other uh, in the medical profession do not want to go that route uh two things it's very hard to tell people to give up sugar so doctors won't do it because <sighs> i want to go at this at least once Let's do it um doctors get away with murder almost literally the this is the opioid crisis not one doctor got got put to the cross on that one mm -hmm. so we we blame the pharmaceuticals the, the pharmaceuticals but not the facilitators who prescribed all the opioids knowing people were hooked to it mm -hmm. knowing that wasn't right right and no doctor got put on the cross on that one i found that very weird don't get me wrong like thank god for doctors and a lot of but they're not you know, we are starting to treat them like we used to treat priests, which means priests could get away. By the way, the whole like sexual thing with priests, he has always been there yeah. for as long like you have writing. There's a kid that said yes and the kid that said no. Like it's always been like that. Not that it's good, obviously. Yeah. It was horrible, but it's always been. But we just let them get away with it. We're kind of doing the same thing with doctors. A lot of them are not up to the, uh, to the um, uh, sworn oath that they took i'm yeah. sorry like we need to face this a lot of what doctors do is sell yeah can we say that a lot of them are drug dealers or often it's just it's just patching covering their own ass in the case too you see like i, I maybe i mentioned this before when i went into the doctor the last time i think i went in was before i had even started training and i was way heavy way overweight i'd hit problems from just mm -hmm. sitting you know went in to look they checked my blood pressure was stupid high i was 350 pounds didn't say anything about any of that in regards yeah, to my yeah. hip problem at all, which, by the way, right. I wasn't doing any moving or exercising. That wasn't brought up. And also, to his credit, that doctor probably knew that I wasn't going to fucking respond to that anyways. But no, he did not tell me that's that I should eat better, right? But that's, yes. that's not on me. That, right. You know what I mean? And so I do think that they're in a tough spot because you can tell. I know America. But everybody's in a tough spot. No, I know. But Look, I, I get that conversation but, with chiropractors all the time saying like, I got 30 minutes yeah. to see someone and then I make $30. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's true. They're in a very tough spot. So are doctors. So fucking what? Do we all accept it well, so it exactly. can get worse? Well, in this case, sir, at that time I was 28 years old. 28, 29, no word about my anything. Just says blood pressure is a little high. We'll come back in. And if it's high again next week, we might have to put you on some blood pressure medication. Right. No. I'm like, I'm fucking 28. Like, there are plenty of other interventions. Right. Now, to, to back up is what, what can happen, and I've talked to doctors about this, is the issue is if I go in at that case at that time and he tells me that I need to eat better, do exercise, and I don't, and then I die in two months, my wife says, well, he was just here for fucking... His blood yeah, pressure okay. thing, and so you could have given there, him this. There's more excuses. So there's all sorts of layers. There's all and, sorts of excuses. Yeah. The new... Okay, so, uh, yes, and I disagree. Yeah. And I'll explain why. <laughs> uh, no, because... No, because that's not right. And I'll explain why. Uh, physiotherapists used to say exactly mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Used to go, you know what? Insurance only pay for this, only pay for that. So I'm, I do only what they're allowing me to do and all that stuff. And that's all the physios yeah. past 30 that we met. Yeah. And then... We met the physios from around 20, yep. 20 to 30. Then what did we see? They wanted to start changing things. Exactly. They wanted to do things the right and way. Because they knew what school was teaching them was not enough. So right. what did they start doing? They all started taking classes outside yeah. of that, strong fit seminars and stuff like that, so they could do a better job in their community. And that community is changing. I have seen... From the people. So it's up to yeah. doctors to change it. Don't. Yes, the system is not good. So fucking what? Yeah. And an interesting where, where our healthcare, people look at our healthcare system as thinking of it as just the way it always has to be, right? As in the, the point, that's uh, always been. The yeah. point with yeah. which yeah. You, the healthcare system intervenes in your Not life anymore. is, well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the point which the healthcare system intervenes in your life now is essentially illness or beyond. Yeah. 
and and so one of the things yeah, I've seen, healthy. I don't know what, I don't remember what country it is or if it's even going very well, but one of the things that they had talked about is implementing basically almost any condition or any state a human can be in has five or six different stages, yep. if you will. And right now, the U.S., we are intervening in this, uh, We yep. the healthcare system crosses paths with us at about stage five yeah. of everything. Right. Yeah. Whereas it's actually like, you know, your nutrition slipping, your weight getting yes. a little out of control, your mood and stuff not working. There's plenty of those things that don't require major interventions at stage one, stage two, yep. stage three, stage four. And that's the main issue was that this system that we have right now is built upon two world wars, you know, in the early 1900s where this system was basically designed to just put people back together in mass. Yep. Right? Yep. And it was, it's, it's essentially, it's combat, if you will, it's, it's combat medicine brought back and scaled up. Right, but there's also, I remember when Michelle Obama, when Michelle That's Obama right. tried to change the, the, the kids' lunch at school, yeah. and she got yeah. so much shit for it, yeah. and Trump reversed it, like, yeah. I don't know, like a few months ago. Yeah. All right, this, so you people out there yeah, have to take the blame for yeah. that shit of that yeah. as well. Like, I'm all for blaming society and systems, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But at some point, we all have to look in the mirror and go that we are fucking this up. Right. The system is a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. So doctors blaming the system when they are part of the fucking thing and help keeping yeah. it the way it is, I'm sorry, it's too easy. Well, so I'm tired of people getting a break. Like, we talk about personal responsibility all the time. Yeah. Right, so like this is the shit we're seeing going away right now with the virus, where suddenly everybody has their own personal responsibility. I'm like, that's awesome. Where were you six months yeah. ago? When, you know, well, this is why I, I get upset. And that's the issue too, is, is, is it is we want to blame the system and not the person. And yes. When you go to the person, they will blame the system. Like, yeah. I can't do anything. System, right. I can't do exactly. anything. System. And I, that's the thing I hate the most because I like to live and think fully system yes. based so it Everything makes me insane system based. where i'm like yeah but that's the problem yes. use your brain and fix that or that's always right. going to be the so fucking problem yeah. what the what, fuck what most people want uh, talking about back to where strong fit will be 10 years ago yeah. like um i'm going to do that every time just to make you oh, feel just, bad uh, the there. the um like what science you know what this is this is people mostly people selling somebody else's invention yeah we see that with yeah. the wheel and everything this is what honestly most of science is the medical stuff being part of that. I, we rely on the Einstein, on the Isaac Newton, of one guy, once in a while, coming up with the brilliant stuff, and then after that, in math, they say, oh yeah, we need to figure out, in physics, they say, we need to figure out the math. What they mean by that is, they're gonna take the stuff that the guy brilliantly came up with, completely, you know, world-changing, yeah. and they're gonna work the applications of it to sell, mm -hmm. right? And so that's mostly what you see. So doctors, the same thing, they're like, they're waiting for someone to change the stuff with the pill. In the meantime, what you're going to have is pill to lose weight, pill for a serotonin, pill for this, pill for that. Yeah. But it's not a system. It's us. We are waiting for someone to come up with an answer so we can sell it. Yeah. It's the same shit we see with the wheel. People, yeah. I saw the wheel in the Strong Fit seminar, so now they're going to start to sell it at their own seminar without even telling us because they go like, oh, he came up with it. Good. I get to, and then they're going to change like without three Without fully understanding worlds. it. Exactly, <laughs> because you didn't do the work. <laughs> I mean, because you didn't do the work. Yeah. So what they're going to do is they're going to change three words, fuck it up completely, but now they get to sell, right? It's the same mentality that is gaining us where we are with the healthcare system. You have to look in the mirror and realize, like, stop waiting for your next savior. Yeah. Stop waiting for the next Einstein. We have to fix the shit. And, yeah. But it's feasible in the physio world. We've seen it. Starting There's a new generation that is changing because they know it's not enough. We've seen that in the physio I, I've, the last two, three years, you see yep. young people come in, it's a totally different generation. It's totally crazy. Like, yeah. you take the 40s and the 20s, man, yeah. they're not in the same universe. It's like, what do you guys learn at school? They learn almost the same shit, not, yeah, but I, they know that it's not enough. Yeah, yeah. It's that, that's that been a very eye-opening thing for me these last few years, because it, it started, yeah. I'd see some bad ones, some old ones, like, Fuck fucking, yeah. what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. And then you see the same I was getting, yep. people that it's like, you're cut from a totally different cloth. Yeah. The they changed my mind because yeah. at first I saw mostly the 40s, 50s and I was I think it's pissed. because the newer generation actually trains. That might that be is, true. That is, a good I mean, point. Yeah. that is a very good point. That is a, yeah, they I come from that, sports. That yeah. helps quite a bit. Yeah, yeah I, I believe as well. Yeah. So there's an entire thing there by maybe doctors should train then. Right. How about that? Yeah. Right. How about we start with that? We need to establish constraints on healthcare professionals. And I think one of the constraints is you need to train. If you're not training, then what, you know what I mean? Like the number of doctors that have unhealthy unhealth, lifestyles, that makes you 
more likely to excuse unhealthy lifestyle in somebody else. Mm -hmm. If doctors were like, no, look, you need to stop that shit. The soda, no, that's too much. Like, otherwise, where do we start? Yeah. That is with true. a personal responsibility like, like, and, bullshit and, and like i said where in the case where maybe it's easier for them to walk away and prescribe something but then you truly aren't even giving yourself a starting point where you can help right uh, so yeah, where do we not, start yeah. like oh are we just giving up because the personal responsibility bullshit of saying like people should stop having a uh, soda when you shove it in their face since they're born and that's all they see on tv yeah. why would they yeah. like education how are they going to educate themselves when you go on internet and uh, half of the the internet says you can have solar no way because they're trying to sell you something else yeah. right and the number of a system itself that needs you to have soda to to keep feeding itself because otherwise coca-cola is going to lose jobs you, you know what i mean like all that bullshit yeah. all right so we're doing every everything we can to sell soda to them but nothing to tell them that it's bad almost nothing you know so you know what is a crazy difference is in soda between europe and the united states my wife's job in the U.S. was to manually haul pallets of soda, yeah, yeah. huge stack and huge yeah. displays from the back of the store where it come off the truck to the front. And she would be loading it into displays and going to get another pallets mm -hmm. in real time as they would be getting snatched off and gone. And she'd go to the next store after this was full and she would sometimes go to the same store two to three times in a day. A human That's being, crazy. multiple human beings in a job of 30,000 people or in a town of 30,000 people's job was to just manually shove pop onto the shelves so people yep. could put it in their fucking cars every day, multiple times. And that's crazy. Here that's and crazy. in Austria as well, you go to a big grocery, a big, big grocery store. How much space is deserved it is devoted to soda? I don't even know. What I mean, you might is. see it, it'll be amongst yeah. other things, but you might see, I would guess at most two meters, like six foot yeah. wide, one shelf. Yeah, that's at because the they don't most. have big fridges here, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but space is a little more but limited. They, but... but they also, you know, in, and in and in Austria, some of the stores there would have, literally would have six or eight bottles of Coca Cola, right. six yeah, bottles of yeah. Coke Zero, no fucking Pepsi to be found. And, yeah, there's and, no and, Pepsi. And there, there are, no I mean, in every supermarket, and you, you see the the pop section just, yeah. yeah. And it is, yeah. it is, right. So, okay. but so where do you start with that? Okay, okay. I mean, well, yeah, but then that means like the same way we started with the physios. We put people to train. We start to make people move. But it starts with doctors telling, we start with education, but at all levels. The first thing we start is to stop saying it's on you. Yeah. We accept that it's, right. this has to be a system that has to change. We're changing the system right now for yeah. a fucking virus. Do you think the coronavirus is worse than what diabetes is going to do to the healthcare system in the U.S.? If you think so, you're crazy. Yeah. The shit is going to go away at some point with the coronavirus. The diabetes is not going away right now. And there's a solution for the diabetes. At right. least there's... Just stop <laughs> having the fucking soda. How can we safe isolate people on one side and tell them fuck off on the other? Mm -hmm. We're just giving up on an entire generation knowing they're going to die. And everybody's like, well, you shouldn't have had the soda. Yeah. How about we try to help instead? Like This is what the hypocrisy of what's happening right now. That's where it's killing me. Is that being... We've been trying for so long to tell, like, stop with the painkillers, like, let me help. How many did we lose yeah. of people losing them to lower back to surgery? When we know lower back surgery, the same problem comes back between two to five years. Yeah. Losing them to painkillers because their back hurts. was like, let me train you, please. But there's a fucking guy in a white coat over there saying, I'll give you a pill. And that guy wins nine out of ten. Yeah. How, that's where the shit starts. Right, that's been going on for years. Where we and people are like, well, and then the answer every time was always the same. That pissed me off. It was like, well, it's up to people to know to know better, basically, yeah. to decide for themselves. Which, I'm like, that's not how this works. People but, don't decide for themselves. They're being influenced. But how do people even know better when there's no education in the infrastructure? Like mm -hmm. kids in the U.S. Like we're talking just U.S. They don't know what a fucking carb, protein, or fat are. I grew up and you you look at the at the food system and like you look at France as a great example. They spend between fifty five to sixty five cents per student on lunch every single day and have fresh produce, yeah. fresh soup, fresh protein. It's all given there. In the U.S., they're spending almost a dollar to dollar twenty per kids, and you get a slice of fucking cardboard, greasy yeah. pizza and a cookie. Yeah. yeah, it's fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah. and some weird corn type product that yeah. looks like corn but tastes like air that nobody's gonna really yeah. eat <laughs> and no one like, knows what that is anyway yeah. right so how yeah, yeah i mean like so but the, that's 
like again social health okay but let's push it a bit further yeah. let this has to like just keep the intensity going yeah it's what i'm saying yeah. like if we are that bent on saving people's lives let's make sure we do it when the fucking shit stops yeah yeah, that's yes, we talk about what the cost of all of this is and was in the future when we're looking back on it, it's going to say, well, in order to prevent this, then let's apply what we learned here, the lessons from this big cost say, that we're paying right now say, to yeah, everything. Coronavirus not just one is thing. not just old people, it's younger people. I'm like, all right, can we look at the quality of life of the people dying in their 40s, mm -hmm. where they overweight, diabetes, like mental struggle, what, what, all that stuff. Can we put that into the paper as well instead of scaring the shit out of everybody? Yeah, into, yeah. Because what I would like people to get out of that is that if you're not in good shape, you're much more likely to die when Corona 2.0 hits. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like people to get from that. It's like, you better get ready for the next one. So like that family, like, did you see the picture of the family of three? Like the, the mom died and then their two older kids no, died. No. I don't think they were on a healthy scale. Yeah. From what I saw, unfortunately, if a respiratory illness hits you and you are obese, or, yeah, it's going to hit you really hard. So let's do this, what we're doing right now. Can we please make sure that the second, the next one, the coronavirus 2.0, does not, does not hit people nearly as hard by making sure they are in better shape, yeah. let's better be, health, let's not be, shape. Let's be health. resilient. Let's yeah. be resilient with this. That's yeah. all I'm asking. Yeah. Right. Let's keep the intensity going so that the next one doesn't fuck up people nearly as bad as this one. Yeah. Can we please start to understand that health matters? Truly. Yeah. Like same people right now that are fucking screaming and so all the, they're so pure. Yeah. Know what I mean, like, oh, they love to tell people what yeah. to do right now. Huh? <laughs> Don't they? Right. Yeah. It's funny. Like, where were you five years ago? Yeah. Well, I've got no more questions in here. Did we, did you sneak in your subjects in the middle of this? Was this part yeah, of this? Yeah, pretty much. I have one more. Okay. <laughs> um, so like in the morning. I was thinking about that and lactate. So that's uh, not a fact. It's, my, it's an opinion. But I'm thinking like, you know, like you wake up in the morning, your body uh, has to switch and everything. But I think you have to switch state the same way as we did with a warm up. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I wake up in the morning and then I feel really good because I sleep well. But, um, you know, like I start to that's do stuff. That's a different thing than doing. Oof, yeah. Like my brain doesn't want to kick in right away. So what I've been doing lately is I started to get like a warm up something uh, pump. Mm -hmm. just to do like I do the opener I mm -hmm. do the oblique opener I do the four pack opener I do some biceps I do some shoulder like all the stuff that usually aches a bit I do that and then just to get a slight pump just to start my day produce some lactate and then mentally I can do so much more like this so uh, um, there's an entire thing I'm reading right now about the um, what they call the resting pain free state they are uh, too much with machine learning but they could predict the the tolerance for pain you know like we yep. talked about based on how the brain networks were at rest in people with an 85 percent mm. accuracy so that the way you are right now the way we're just like this yeah. with no pain if they were to map our brain they could map out who could tolerate pain or who could not so it seems that there's the, the we have our own mapping uh already built in and but with different state again back to you know like the default mode network versus the salient network mm -hmm. and all that stuff it seems like we all mapping a certain way the key i think is to understand the space that you're good in and to learn to switch the state so first thing when i wake up in the morning i feel good but my brain is not working the way i want so i do uh all that stuff the pump and everything get the lactate going and it allows me to be in a less sympathetic state to bring down to more parasympathetic with lactate where my brain works the way I want because I'm more on the pain cluster one. Is a pain cluster two, so it's going to have a different approach to that. But I think if we can start to map all this, you can really okay. build your days in a better way. Yeah. Right. If he starts to train, he'll go sympathetic, which means he has to go crazy. Yeah. And I don't want that off when he wakes up in the morning. But me, I'm the opposite. If I don't do that, I'm, I'm going to start to get... Uh, too anxious, too sympathetic. Mm -hmm. I need to bring myself down by doing a warm up training. Mm -hmm. I produce lactate. My brain works the way I want. I'm cool. So the key is always to reach the top of the arch, but this seems to be we that we dif depending on the whatever yeah, genetic might be. Yeah. What your there seems to be two is, groups. Yeah. There's one group that starts from the left, 
one group that starts from the right. So yeah. Some but need to upregulate, some need to down regulate. downregulate. Yeah. yeah. And, and then we, we both probably need the tools for both at some point anyways. Anyway, but right. Some it's but be for me, it. like starting with this, like now I'm, I'm looking forward to it in the morning because my brain works better. I'm like, I want to be into that active state, yeah. but I can't get into that good, feeling good active states without uh, getting the lactic produced without the training. Yeah. The training gets me there, whereas Richard will be the opposite. Yeah. If I get it, make him do that, he'll start to go, well, well let's go fuck shit up then. <laughs> well, that's Richard will have a big fucking yeah. day. Yeah, that's usually why crashed. I just, why yeah. usually yeah. like I'll wake up and I have to go upstairs and I'll sit down without phone or anything for mm-hmm. 15, 20 minutes, stare out the window, have coffee or a yep. tea. And then, then from there I have like 30 minutes and I need to go train. Yeah. As soon as I start moving, I'm like, I just want to go yeah. train. Otherwise I get lazy afterwards yeah. and I cry. And you got to blow yeah. it out when you train or else you'll be all kind of all yeah. day. Yeah. yeah, so me, I got to, uh, I feel lazy if I don't do anything right off the bat, but it's not a full training session, I can't do that. I just have to have just a little just bit and I have energy, then eventually I go train. Well, it's like I always said, nothing worth doing, nothing you can't do without a pump isn't worth doing. Like, that yeah. is true. <laughs> that is true. But if you look, you're more on the sympathetic at rest, whereas he's more on the parasympathetic at rest. Yeah. Right? So you start from the, from the right, where Richard starts from the left. I start from the right as well. Yeah. So that you get a pump first, you get, it feels good, all right, let's do things. Right? Yeah. But him, he would just driving to train right away. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, but it's, so at the end, it is going toward the top of the arch, but we start from the two opposite tops. So there seems to be a warm up first thing in the morning that will be different based on people. But that's important because otherwise people will listen to Rich and well, do what he does. Mm-hmm. And that might not work or they'll do what I do, but that might not work yeah. either. Or do what I do and just argue about, argue with Uber drivers. and <laughs> There you go. You have to express <laughs> that sympathetic whichever yeah. way you can. Exactly. You guys came in and they sat down and like, Jesus, you've been really negative since you got here. And I was like, no, 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 I can't bitch about these things to my wife. So I just come sure. here and no, unload I didn't say negative. everything. I see you were angry. <laughs> yeah. There was angst. There was, there was some anger. I would there. say that was, I would describe that as expressed anger. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. It's better in and in out. better out than in, man. Yeah. So, well, I think that's got us wrapped up for today. We, uh, yeah, we're good. Keep... Piling in these hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. (laughs) I told you once you were moving here, I'm putting you to work. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, everything, you can find everything at strongfit.com, strongfitequipment.com, strongfitequipment.eu. We have Manta Fitness, carries sandbags in Australia. Uh, What else we got? Sandbags Uh, are good right now. Sandbags. Yep. Sandbag, you want home stuff. That's the stuff. Yeah. Um, We have the strongfitlibrary.com. Yeah. Like we talked about last time, everything you got there. Uh, I don't know what more to say other than just please go check it out. Dig it, don't share, please. friend. Please, We're doing that please. for them. Like, you should be grateful. We did all the oh, shit. No. You did all that work for I them. I still right? act nice. Exactly. Do you do the click the subscribe button and then you point and there's like no, a little... No, I can't bring myself. Oh, come on. You go click and subscribe. Oh, yeah. Make sure you... How do people say that? Make sure you ring the bell so you get notified. I'm like, yeah. just like make sure you stay attached to whatever it is that you watch our shit on. Yeah, subscribe on YouTube. Yeah, subscribe. We, we make at least a tenth of a cent every time you watch something a hundred times yeah we did we did switch those to monetizing just to see what it, i think we'll, we're going to pull about we 70 make, bucks a month i think we make that's pretty four, good i think we make four dollars per episode so give or take yeah yeah we're so, rocking the i'm paying my i'm paying for the my coffee. bills it pays for the coffee it pays for the, the it pays for the internet around here so uh yes. Yes. <laughs> at least it pays for the wi-fi um to pay for things more than the wi-fi you can go to podcast.strongfit.com for the support Ooh, page. that's a good segue oh he's getting good Look at that this. we'll be on fucking cbs news yeah exactly time. um but yeah Real if you want to support the page we have uh monthly donation and one-time donations there one time donations uh, we're putting a buttons at everything $5. from five bucks to a hundred bucks or five bucks a month to be a philanthropist a i mean i'll take a million yeah if you want to work out I'll always if, throw it out if there, you want to work out some sort of special <laughs> yeah. donation you can always email i'll us. tell you that if you give us a million we will mention you there was a dude that was selling an app for a hundred thousand dollars and all the app did was said i'm fucking rich and people bought it i think bad. he sold like six of them at a hundred thousand dollars so stupid so if there's somebody if out you there give us a hundred thousand dollars i will mention you yeah, yeah. i mean we, that, that would, that would, that would provide so much episode. progression we'll towards work, human we'll kind. all work a shirt with your face on it yeah. i mean for one episode that might for, be as yeah. far as we get <laughs> four hundred thousand we'll do it for two episodes yep. <laughs> so uh but that's enough for today um yeah we'll see you next week and cool. with your cooking show oh yeah, yeah. Up. that should be we're cooking. We're going to market like, right now. Timelines are weird, but we're filming that next. I like Julian said cooking. Cooking shows at four, and I was like, we can do it right after this. He goes, 
at four. So now I've realized that he wants it at four so he can eat at six, seven. And then that was kind of it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, honestly, but that's fine. See you guys. So